Shadi and today it's gonna be Korea versus Japan it's gonna be two different styles that are highly aesthetic highly beautiful and technical and it's gonna be very different but at the same time they have their similarities to the untrained eye a lot of the gripping might look very similar but we're gonna dive deep they're both different one is a very quiet beast that will give the impression of passivity while the other will just keep you on the move exhaust you mentally and physically and once you cannot take it that's well they go in for the kill so it's gonna be a very different episode specifically the grip fighting sequence it's gonna be the longest because there's just so much detail to unpack there's just so much uh, tactics to unpack particularly on the Korean side back from the old school days and even till this day so this episode we're gonna go through the grip fighting and followed by the throwing because the throwing will really reflect uh, the grip fighting and the grip fighting reflects the choice of throws obviously so uh, this episode is gonna be the big one is the grips as I mentioned this finally the signature throws the top three if I like to call it and which will also reflect the grip fighting as well and finally the common throw and it's gonna be the serenage the serenage of the Japanese different from the Korean and of course that will all be linked back to your kumikata basically so uh, the first one is obviously the Japanese gripping I always talk about it is that it's basic sleeve and lapel and uh, the simplicity works best but I always or sometimes I fail to mention that uh, the Japanese give this false sense of security even if you have your deep Russian arm or Georgian arm but if they have their particular grip and you ha they have this particular uh, opening even though you have your grips they will still strike we've seen this with Inoue we've seen this with Mariyama we've seen this with Yoshida all of them so that's uh, one very uh, clear aspect of the Japanese gripping here you have the other choice which is the underarm and the lapel uh, here you see Kose Inoue doing uh, Uchimata uh, Uchigari with his uh, grip this is for the same stance the opponent so um, they stand still very like they've they say like their arms are fish hooks they don't tend to use them they're just like a connection but once they have that opening they are just sitting there and waiting but when they have both their hands on you it's gonna it's go time there's no need for big movements it's just uh, static but also very much waiting and once the time is right it's explosive entry and that's it so for the Korean here you see it's one of Jin's old tactics here the grip fighting uh, he has stuff that are now considered illegal like breaking with both arms one grip here you see pushing and constantly moving and pushing it against his stomach uh, that will make his opponent look passive but now uh, it's gonna make both of them look passive and it's gonna be a shido for both so uh, it's kind of like a dirty tactic if you want but here constantly on the move constantly flailing the lapel but here especially this like uh, pressing the arm on the uh, on the stomach he does this a lot and it's gonna make the other look passive but now it is considered illegal both uh, breaking the grip with both hands and here pressing because you yourself are not attacking you're just stalling the game and it's considered I would say is a bit unethical so unless it's the breaking with both hands I, I, I don't fully disagree with it here is the new modern one and that is the signature of the Koreans and that is like the constant pushing pulling uh, kind of like throwing your uh, fishing hook into the water with the lapel uh, that will keep your opponent really guessing uh, don't have his solid grips and you're gonna keep them on the move uh, you can't be static and, and just attack so here you see the difference between the Japanese and the Korean here you see Jen uh, really keeping it highly on the move also the hips they are constantly shifting going the sideways semicircles uh, in and out um, also another thing is that sometimes they might grip the lapel very low like almost on the lower part of the pack which will really give them a lot of uh, movement or a lot of space to move the, the lapel especially for Kochigari or Sotogari um, like really uh, taking it 
up and then pushing it to the face Choi Min Ho does this as well so it doesn't have to be like they are basically going against the grain you have the Georgians the Russians and the French going to the the neck and all the way down to the back but they go the opposite way they mirror the back but on the pack lowered but will really give them a uh, a solid grip and really flailing it and really destabilizing someone with the movement you saw Jen doing so here you see after a lot of movement uh, he fi and broke completely the posture and the mentality of his opponent and finally struck with Tomoinage the other thing about Korean I find it interesting is the uh, kake part of the throw look um, the hand gestures in particular is that they tend to collapse into each other and strike down almost like a sword usually when you throw down you have like you, the big pull on the sleeve and you have the big punching down with the um, with the lapel in Uchimata for example uh, but will leave your arms like really pushed forward and really spaced out uh, but here you see it's like everything comes close together to the chest almost like cutting with the sword kind of like doing serenage but for other throws like ko Uchigari and also togari here you see and demonstrating it for his ko Uchigari. Uh, here he's demonstrating how important the um, hand gesture is here he steps to the side but here he shows that uh, it is very important to push down and really collapse your elbows together and that will uh, consist of 90% of the throw but in coach Igari, he only puts his uh, his leg as like a like a I don't know like a block basically he's not even reaping so let's go to signature throws obviously I've talked about this here you have the Toshihiko Koga's famous serenage far different than the Korean it really does explain the I have one grip which is one arm uh, I'm, I, I'm like very silent very passive but if I have that space I'm gonna go in just like as you see here uh, false sense of security given to Uke here you see like they were both just static and then done boom it's finished uh, very different than Korean which is constantly flailing your lapel um, pushing and pulling your sleeve moving around uh, they just need that false static motion in order to like really strike here great example once again a lot of strength is needed as well Koreans use it for explosive uh, going down to the ground so it's a different employment of strength basically so here you see the other one is obviously Uchimata um, great choice of throws uh, Tsukasa Yoshida Kozei Inoue Shohei Ono um, Joshiro Maruyama all excel at this throw uh, basic entry you know from like here she has her opening boom goes in uh, very strong and firm grip but not but very static it's not flailing and like really shaking and shivering shivering shaking your opponent and destabilizing them you just have you just need to have your grip and your opening and then just be very calm and patient that's basically their entire game uh, and also it really shows in Shohei Ono's Osoto Gari this famous Osoto Gari where uh, the Mongolian had a very dominant grip but Ono had his grip nonetheless and here boom he strikes there is strength obviously but also there is timing so the Koreans obviously I don't need to say this which is the Morote Serenage uh, cross sleeve or uh, just normal Kumikata uh, here you see like constantly on the move constantly you know playing poker with your hands uh, basically uh, here also the reverse I'm gonna talk about it in a little bit uh, so here it's the explosiveness needed with both arms are needed to be connected and on the move it's gonna when they're constantly on the move it's gonna make this explosive power going down and really shooting for serenage far easier which really complements uh, their gripping in my opinion so here you see it uh, moving and bam it's finished it's aesthetic it's uh, very much explosive and technically elite um, they're very famous for it for this particular reason and the gripping plays a huge uh, role so the other one is Ko Kochigari all 
all the highly elite Koreans like Jin and uh, Ann Ball also had this uh, Kochigari. So here you see the hand gesture uh, really plays a role. Also, the cross gripping is very big in Korean uh, judo. Uh, he doesn't weep with the leg. That's what makes it so special. You see it here. He just blocks it. Even he doesn't even cup his leg. He just puts uh, the the heel and lifts his toes up. He doesn't even cup like your traditional uh, Kochigari, which is very special and unique to them and uh, it's very aesthetically pleasing. I like watching this all day. I've tried to imitate it myself in Randori. So uh, here you see circles around, but the, the hands are doing most of the work. Uh, the, the leg is just there to block. So uh, Antsuko Chigari is really something. And finally, of course, is the Korean reverse Seonage, which is uh, invented by the legendary Choi Min Ho. Uh, flailing with the lapel and then you just get it and it's just so genius i still cannot get over the fact that you know he's gripping so little of the entire gi and yet he was able to cause uh, uke to coil up and then really like swirl almost like a tornado and fall directly into that uh, ippon it's a great invention in modern judo history uh, and from Korea of course so here uh, they were already very famous for their serenage and now here adding their own uh, variation it is just absolutely commendable and it is a highly successful uh, throw because it's just I mean there is an easy fix to it but when people panic and they try to resist uh, and they're most likely they're gonna lose and that's basically the foundation of judo uh, here you see multiple Koreans do this, An Shan Grim, and Paul Choi Min Ho, uh, even Fabio Basile does it, so uh, it has made its way outside of Korea. So now let's compare finally the uh, common throws and it's gonna be Seo and Age. So uh, the fact that they are very static and waiting for the right moment will really push their uh, preference towards a standing serenage because there is distance there is someone that's like really putting his arm out and they are creating the space so to speak really depending on what they are giving you and here bam you just go in uh, also they are doing drop serenage i understand that but uh, for the japanese expression particularly the kumikata that's really static and seeing someone that's uh, just passive in front of you and then exploding uh, it would be best uh, for them to choose the standing seonage because it is easily accessible they're both still standing uh, going down is gonna take a long time and also it is predictable for someone that is static in front of you but for someone that's constantly on the move for Koreans uh, it's far more startling to go down and also they have both grips so also uh, get, having one grip uh, really is not the best thing for the drop seonage because it's not gonna completely break the posture uh, like a two-handed grip obviously um, and will be very prone to counters etc so uh, seonage for the japanese or the gripping philosophy the standing variation suits uh, their gripping far more in my opinion uh, the Koreans really like uh, shaking constantly pushing and pulling and moving it's best to uh, to go for a drop variation because it really suits their type of gripping so um, this is what I have to say for their seonage also uh, the choice that they have like uh, cross gripping and also sleeve and lapel having both hands is far better for the drop seonage because you won't be that prone to counter attacks as someone dropping just having one grip or one side like just one hand basically as contact because they're gonna have so much options uh, to counter you with so that's basically it um i i find that uh, these both styles of judo they can complement each other you can use for example the gripping tactics for uh, the korean constantly keeping them guessing constantly keeping them on the move uh, and then you can obviously finish with like uchimata 
rather than um, Serenage or Drop Tayotoshi. I know Drop Tayotoshi is big in Korean judo, but uh, the top three, in my opinion, are the reverse, the classical Morote, and of course the Kochigari, which goes great as a feint for Serenage. So um, you can you can really combine the two, in my opinion, the um, Tewaza for exactly the uh, Kake part of their. Uh, throwing like the osotogari and the kochigari like you see dropping like a sword you can also like really keep them on moving but finish maybe with like a japanese style throw like an uchimata or a tomoenagi so um this is mainly it uh, if you have anything else to add, let me know down below. Also, consider supporting me on Patreon. I have exclusive content for the patrons only. The link will be in the description. 